And welcome back to the third hour of our program. On the line with us is Dr. Marty Goldstein. He's an integrative veterinarian specializing in both traditional and alternative therapies for animals. He's the creator of Nature's Blend, which is a dog food product, which, by the way, is advertised on this program. That is not why he is on this show, and we're not going to be, this is not an infomercial. I'm, we're not going to be, you know, pushing his product. I just have to, you know, uh, uh, what is it? disclose, I think is the word, disclose that to you. Um, he's the author of the book, The Nature of Animal Healing, The Definitive Holistic Medicine Guide to Caring for Your Dog and Cat, and also a forthcoming book, The Spirit of Animal Hearing, Healing. There's an amazing movie about him uh, that uh, Louise watched and then, you know, said, <laughs> said to me, you got to watch this. It's called dogdocthefilm.com is, is where you'll find it. That's the link for it. Um, his website is Dr. Marty, D R M A R T Y dot com, and uh, his Twitter handle is official D R Marty, official Dr. Marty. Dr. Marty uh, Goldstein, welcome to the program. It's so so great to have you here with us. Um, I'm I'm absolutely fascinated. I, I was just blown away watching your movie of literally people bringing their dogs in at death's door, and you're fixing them with with, uh, with nutrition, with supplements, things like that. Um, how did you get into this? That's right, Tom. First of all, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, I love animals. I graduated Cornell Vet School in 1973. About one out of 10 dogs got cancer. It was always a disease of the old. Now statistics show one out of every 1.61 dogs in the United States will get cancer, and it's becoming a prominent disease in the young, along with other degenerative diseases. So something is is wrong there is no health care taught to veterinarians unfortunately and or i reversed my own genetically based <laughs> problems way back in the 70s by changing my diet and going on supplements mm -hmm. applied it to animals and lo and behold it worked so that's how i got here yeah it's 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 an it's an absolutely amazing story um how, nutrition and supplements talk about the the you know why why is cancer so widespread in dogs? And, and also, I mean, just, you know, more generally, we had, I had a cat, Higgins, that I just loved. He was one, probably my all-time favorite pet. Uh, he was a rescue cat. He was super, like, super vicious at first. We, we had to lock him in a bedroom for, like, a, several months because he would just viciously attack anybody. And within a year or so, we had turned him into just the friendliest, sweetest cat ever. He... We ha we were feeding him cat food. This is when we were living in Washington D.C. And it turned out the brand of cat food we were feeding him. He died of kidney failure. The the, the brand of cat food we were feeding him had this uh, Chinese um, contaminant. I think it's called melamine. Melamine, yes. And it, it poisoned him. I mean, you know, my cat was poisoned by his cat food, and I'm still processing that. I, what? Uh, you know, obviously that that is not a crisis right now. That it became, you know, there was a lot of publicity about that, and it got fixed. But what is the what is the state of of nutrition for animals in general in the United States, and is it different in, from other parts of the world? Well, no, it, it's not. You know, unfortunately, so much of the commercialized diets are scientifically based, but not biologically appropriate. Uh, when I got out of Cornell, we were feeding our dogs and cats the semi-moist food, and it was literally devoid of food. It had chemicals, coloring agents, flavor enhancers. It really didn't have any food, but it was scientifically based. And then, you know, a major aspect of the pet food industry is directly tied to the cereal industry. You know, so many of the, the store-bought commercialized foods are 50 to 64 percent processed cereal byproducts. Show me one tooth in a dog or a cat's mouth that's flat for grinding cereal. So it's not biologically appropriate. And you know the old saying, Tom, it all starts with food. I reverse my own disease processes genetically based by starting to eat biologically whole foods. Same thing for animals. You know, they, they are carnivores. Your cat is a an obligate carnivore and the melamine that was put in there that came over from China was to artificially raise protein levels. Right. 
you know, but how about meat? <laughs> Wouldn't that raise the protein level? Well, that's what cats are designed to eat. I mean, it's just, Absolutely. it's like, there you go. Um, so <laughs> there you so go. tell me about, you know, for people who whose pets are facing problems, I mean, I, I know somebody who's got a pet, a, a dog that is diabetic. Um, I've known other people, in fact, I've known two people in the last couple of years who've had dogs die of cancer. Um, you know, outside of high quality uh, dog food, which I, I realize is your business, what should we be doing with our pets to prevent these kinds of disasters and or to respond to them? Well, you know, we have to look, you know, my key words is always biologically appropriate. One thing you could do is I helped start an organization way back in the late 70s called the American Holistic Veterinary Medical Association, hmm. ahvma.org. And there are so many integratively functioning veterinarians right now, that site has a listing of the integrated veterinarians around North America, you know, state by state, city by city, and what they practice. So hooking up with a veterinarian that practices integrated veterinarian is the best you could do. So the there's, there's, there's no veterinarian educated on what a dog or a cat should really be eating. So there's there's no veterinarian equivalent to a uh, a naturopath. Uh, you know, uh, uh, here in in Portland, naturopaths can basically practice pretty much any kind of medicine an MD can, or much of it anyway. You know, uh, including minor surgeries and things. But uh, is there a is there any way to know that your vet is is you know essentially a naturopathic vet or or yes, through this site. Through that site, that's the way to do if it. If you go online, it'll actually tell you where that veterinarian is located and the modalities of alternative therapy that they have integrated into their conventional medical practice. Right. So in the best of both worlds, Tom. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it sounds like it. Obviously, you know, feeding our dogs biologically appropriate food, as, as, as you describe, is a, a great start. Are there supplements that we should be thinking about giving to our pets? Yeah, I mean, even a healthy animal, born healthy that's young, I feel should be on supplements. You know, now it, they're called nutraceuticals. My definition of a supplement is a concentrated food to make up for the deficiencies we've handed down over the generations and the decades by inappropriate food chains. The destruction of so many foods by the heating process and then putting in synthetic supplements. So yes, supplements are concentrated foods that make the diet, even if it's very good food, whole again. Right, yeah, I, 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 I feel that way about, you know, people too. Um, yeah, it, it, I mean, it, it is the same. You know, my only advantage and why I know this is right is I've literally worked on tens and tens of thousands of companion animals and reversed tens of thousands of them that had chronic degenerative non-responsive illnesses by getting them on, like you said at the beginning of the show, getting them on proper biologically appropriate food and supplementation. So it works. Yeah. You, you also talk about the spiritual nature of animals. Uh, as my last question here, we're going to hit a break in a second. L let me just toss that one to you. Oh, yeah. It's amazing what they know that we don't know that they know. They are spiritual beings, sometimes at a higher level. They know when an earthquake is going to come. They know if they're their guardian, their caretaker, is going to have a seizure up to 24 hours before the seizure. They are spiritual beings, and we need to work on that human-animal bond so, you know, we could learn from them, they could learn from us, and the world would be a better place because they represent the level of unconditional love for the human race. That's brilliant. Dr. Marty Goldstein, uh, the website drmarty.com, drmarty.com, or uh, official drmarty on Twitter and dogdocthefilm.com if you want to see this amazing. And also, drmartypets.com. I have so much of my information Great. on that. drmartypets.com. Dr. Marty Goldstein, thanks a lot.